We're taking this show on the road as this is a brand new edition of ABL Recap. My name is Carlo Pamintua. My name is Joe Sarmenta and we'll take you through the double header of Wednesday night's action. Hong Kong Eastern versus Macau Black Bears, San Miguel Ala Filipinas versus Macau Wolf Warriors. We're coming to you from the Southern Stadium in Wan Chai, Hong Kong, and it was the debut of Hong Kong Eastern basketball team. And the first thing I really saw was the number of fans who have showed up in support of their squad, really united in cheering for the common cause, helping out the local team. I think a lot of Hong Kong fans were just itching, yeah. waiting for the start of their of their team season debut. I think the past two weeks, they already saw a couple of teams, hey, we want our first game also. That's why they came out in throngs in this first game of the season. Unfortunately for Hong Kong, as the debuting team, you will run into some problems because you're playing for the first time at home, you're playing for the first time in a real game with yeah. the imports, and they fell behind rather early in that matchup against the Macau Black Bears, who are in their third game already, it was hot shooting coming from Macau as usual. As he said, 17 three-point conversions in their game against the Macau Wolf Warriors and they had six in the first quarter alone. I think Macau really caught Hong Kong off guard with their shooting. I think Hong Kong Eastern prepared for the outside shooting. And then suddenly, oh, when they were faced up close, just how hot these black bears yep. were. They were really caught off guard in that first quarter. And the problem also was, it was compounded by the foul situation of Michael Holyfield. He got yeah. into a couple of early fouls and then he was whistled for a double technical with Kenny Manigault as well coming from Macau and it limited his presence because that was his third personal foul. He had to be benched for most of the second quarter. You know, him going to the bench was sort of a win-win kind of win -win situation yeah. for Hong Kong. They needed his size, but at the same time, it allowed Hong Kong to try to use a different set of lineup. It, uh, I think it allowed Price to play more of a facilitator. And I think in, really in the first half or all the way to the second half, you saw Eastern really trying to... Uh, try to get their footing in their first game of the season as opposed to as you mentioned Macau was in their third game of the season turned out to be a happy accident for Hong Kong Eastern to be honest because having a smaller yeah. speedier lineup allowed them to close out on the three-point shooters of the Macau Black Bears from six three-point shots to zero three-point shots in the second quarter and of course the big revelation is the new guy the new import the new main man yes. for Hong Kong Eastern in Trey Kell who scattered 25 points in the first half alone now yo we've been so used to seeing marcus elliott wearing that hong kong eastern white and blue we saw odarian bassett last season and we saw how dominant they were from the point guard shooting guard positions now all of that will be passed on to the locals in chanchu wing and of course their team captain lay key how do you think they responded in this particular game i think especially when uh tj price was caught was in foul trouble, I think that's when Chan Su Wing and Liki started to feel like, oh, we have to, we have to bring yeah. down the ball, and we can't rely solely on Trey Kell. And I think if you're a Hong Kong fan, I think you'll be happy that Trey Kell was bringing down the ball. Price was aggressive, but you have to worry. Okay, where where does the extra firepower come from? I think that was the main draw because in recent years you always used to okay, Marcos will carry us. Uh, like, no matter the personal changes, Elliot was there to save the day. And I think this time, it was a little bit of, whether it was Leaky or Chan Su Wing, was really, okay, who will we give the ball to? Yeah. I th I, I don't, and I don't think Trey Kill was ready yet at that particular moment, and especially because of the Macau defense. Score was tied at 46 apiece at the half. So, you know what, if you're Hong Kong Eastern, it doesn't matter how tough that first quarter was because you were able to pull back in the second without the help of your main big man in Michael Holyfield. Yeah, I, yes, again, to going back to your point, I think the lack of a big man gave uh, Hong Kong more of offensive flexibility, but also defensive flexibility because it allowed them to stretch the floor uh, as opposed to, you know, a clogging in the lane to defend the paint. They were forced to kind of stretch it out uh, to, in the perimeter and really, and to credit uh, Coach uh, Jordan Brady, they tried a little bit of zone, especially without Holyfield, without the size that they needed. So that zone we kind of bothered Macau in that second quarter. Third quarter, the scoring slowed down a bit as both teams were more aware of what the other team 
was trying to do. And then come the fourth quarter, it was just an onslaught coming from the Macau Black Bears. We'll talk about their offense in just a little bit. But how impressed were you that they limited the output of Trey Kell, who exploded for 25 in the first half, only finished with, you know, yeah. 31 points in total, slowed down considerably in the second half. You know, I talked to Coach Charles Hunter Marcus uh, after the game, and he was like, that, he said, that's all I did. That's all I did. <laughs> Scoring, rebounding, and not just, you know, on the ball, but off yeah. the ball. He really researched the hell out of that guy. And I said, Coach, did you know that he scored 25 points in the first half? We were surprised. And, I, and he said, no, I wasn't surprised. I think uh, he agrees that he is going to be a problem for the rest of the league. Rest of the league. And he said he hopes he, he won't face him again soon. Certainly a lot of respect coming from Tr Coach Charles Hantomachos. But the man in the fourth quarter was no one else but Mike McKinney for the Macau Black Bears. He had eight points in the first three quarters and then exploded for a casual 18 points in the final period. Yo, he was two of 20 from downtown in their first two games but when he saw that shot go in that three-point shot go in yeah. in the fourth there was no stopping him i think what what you can take away if you're a mike mckinney fan was that the swagger was back i think more than the points he can score a bunch but i think and that three-pointer to your point when you were talking about this three-pointer he did the whole trash talking into the air. <laughs> it was back the, the original yep uh his three-point celebration was on and again, to Coach Charles mentioned that he, he trusts his leader. That, I think that's the main point. Macau will be a contender. There's no question about it. But from where you saw it, what is in store for the future for Hong Kong Eastern? I think Hong Kong has a lot of pieces, a lot of great pieces. Their locals have definitely stepped up, especially with, with the absence of, uh, not really the absence, but really the new familiarization of imports. But I think the main thing for them is time. They need time to play together. They had a, a ton of turnovers and most of them were like bad passes. It's, it, it was more of not knowing where your teammate was going. More than anything, more than uh, they'll play better as a team and all that, but it was really, it's time. Certainly not uh, bad first performance for Hong Kong Eastern as they had a lot of positives to build yes. on moving forward. But it is Macau that comes away with the victory and they now have two wins against their lone defeat of the season. The second part of our doubleheader for Wednesday, November 27 was a game between two teams that lost their debut yep, in yep. Season 10 of the ASEAN Basketball League. We're talking about the Macau Wolf Warriors who lost to the Macau Black Bears and San Miguel Ala Pilipinas who were dropped by Mono Vampire in Bangkok. It was a bounce back win at stake and it would be a crazy one between these two teams because they wanted to forget about their struggles of their first game. They gave it their all in their next game but sadly only one will be able to bounce back and you know what for San Miguel Ala Pilipinas it should have been you know a jarring experience to lose by that much to a team that you know you can contend with because that was the same team yes. that they defeated in the finals when they won their ABL championship you know uh, for our new ABL fans out there and probably our old ones as well who've been following the league for the past couple of eight ten years two years ago Alab and Mono figured in an epic, epic five-game series. Yep. Guys, you gotta, gotta go back to the archives, <laughs> watch the five-game series. Sure. It was really an instant classic. You could say that it's kind of a rivalry, so to speak, because most of the pieces from both sides are still there. A, little bit, a lot of huge changes, but again, the animosity, so to speak, is there. So I think it shocked the entire league and all of their fans, especially Filipino fans, who saw, oh, what happened to Mono and then you were hoping that this team would bounce back against a team and historically has been struggling yep. but that wasn't the case especially with, the, with Macau's new pieces. The Macau Wolf Warriors have introduced a couple of ABL champions mm -hmm. into their lineup. We're talking about Douglas Herring, their guard and Stephen Thomas, the living legend, the leading yeah. rebounder of the ABL. And, and that certainly helps their cause because you have players who know how to win. And we saw a glimpse of that, yep. especially in the end game of their contest against Alab Pilipinas. Lawrence Domingo, one of a very few returning players for Alab, had an opportunity to seal the deal mm -hmm. with a layup late in the fourth quarter. No, missed down. it. He missed it. And then the Wolf Warriors got a stop. 
Douglas Herring was fouled by Khalif Wyatt taking a three-point shot. They were up by two. He missed the first, made the second and the yeah. third to extend the game into overtime. You know, the Wolf Warriors in the past mm -hmm. would often fall apart in the end game because they lack the leadership. But now with Douglas Herring there, they look yeah. like a different team altogether. I think, I think putting someone who's a winner in any team, put, put Douglas Herring in Hong Kong, put Douglas Herring uh, in, in any of China. the other eight teams, I think putting uh, someone who knows how to win, it's it cho totally changes the yep. game. Not just on the court, but really off the court. That's when the leadership happens. In the same light, um, let's say Marcus Elliott. We, talk, we talked about him in the first game. Putting Marcus Elliott, uh, who is a champion now with the Singapore Singers, I'm sure he has stories to share. So that kind of sharing, uh, Stephen Th from Stephen Thomas and Douglas Herring, two very good okay. veterans. I think uh, Macau Wolf, are, Wolf Wars are a totally different team just by those two players alone. In this ball game, both teams led by double digits. San Miguel Ala Pilipinas led by as many as 15 in the first half, but then a big turnaround in the third quarter for the Macau Wolf yeah. Warriors as they took the lead, even led by double digits, led by 11 as well. Huge turnaround game for Julian Boyd with 38 points and 17 rebounds. And then Stephen Thomas adding to his already impressive rebounding tally stop rebounding. With, with 17 stop. rebounds like stop. it was nothing. But then in the fourth quarter, of course, we went into that crazy end game. In the overtime period, Khalif Wyatt and Jason Brickman simply stepped up for San Miguel Ala Pilipinas. Well, I think right now for Alab, they had a lopsided loss first game, struggled against the new look Wolf Warriors. I think the main key for them is they need a leader. For years and years, it was uh, Ronaldo Balkman and uh, Ray, Ray Parks. Parks. From you got the locals, you got the world imports, and I think right now the main question for Alab is who will be their leader this season? Um, maybe it's Jason Brickman for his vast experience. But again, Brickman is new. Brickman is new to a team that's new also. So I don't know who will step up, who will coach Jimmy Alapag trust in the end game. Right? In, the, in this game was Jason Brickman. So it'll be interesting to see as the season goes along, when, when, when the more difficult games come along, how will Alab's veterans, how will Jason Brickman, how will Coach Jimmy Alapag respond? Forgettable performance coming from Jason Brickman. And I know Filipino basketball fans we're also excited to finally see him competing as a local, but now he picked up with double-digit assist numbers in this big win against the Wolf Warriors. Yep, and yep. that is your ABL recap for Wednesday, November 27 action. Congratulations to the Macau Black Bears and San Miguel Ala Pilipinas for picking up their victories. But hang in there because we have one more game. Later on today, Someone's O has got to go as Mono Vampire Basketball Club faces off against the Kuala Lumpur Dragons. Two undefeated teams will go at it and someone will take the early advantage in the 10th season of the ASEAN Basketball League. That is it for your ABL recap. But before I send it over to my partner, please follow the ASEAN Basketball League's social media sites on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. My name is Carlo Pamintuan. My name is Joe Sermenta, and together we will rise 10 greatness.